everybody and welcome to Oakham Point webinar. We have a very exciting program for you today, Kilioomics platform that is going to uh, bring transformative change to drug development by keeping um, the tissue alive for more than eight weeks. I'm also happy to welcome Shoguan Huang and Steph Forward, our sponsor to the webinar. Either pharmaceutical companies or, pharma uh, or medical device companies supporting companion diagnostic development or diagnostic, uh, you know, in vitro diagnostic product development that is uh, either go against FDA or CLIA, clinical biomarker research work, a Sanofi, Belgian, Galia. They also work with some of the small startups, uh, you know, they can be CAR T, in vivo CAR T, gene therapy. Our feature presentation and presenter, Dr. Frank Lau, a surgeon scientist and serial entrepreneur, a principal investigator for over a dozen of clinical trials, and author of six global patents that served as a basis for uh, the foundation of Keliomics. Thank you, Julia. Um, really grateful for the opportunity to present today. Uh, thank you, Xu Guang, for uh, sponsoring, and thank you all for attending. Um, so I am the CEO and co-founder of Keliomics, and what we offer are clinical trials in a dish. The stronger use case, of course, is for better IND selection, so going upstream in the drug development pipeline. If you use our technology across all aspects of preclinical development, we can help you select assets that will work in humans. Underlying all of this is that the factors that determine human drug response aren't captured in these older preclinical models. Okay, so as a clinician, I know that patient response to treatment is driven by the host environment or the also called the tumor microenvironment. And really what it comes down to is that cell lines, spheroids, organoids, optic systems, and mice can't model these clinical factors. And I'll give you two examples. The first is let's look at obesity status, okay? There's tons of data on this. We know that obese breast cancer patients have a 40% increased risk of both breast cancer recurrence and death. Despite these data, there are no validated preclinical models of obese breast cancer. Moving on to a second example, which is the clinical tumor stage, right? So again, this is exceptionally well documented in the clinical literature. The clinical tumor stage is the most important predictor of response to therapy, especially in neoadjuvant in breast cancer patients. So what do we mean when we say the clinical tumor stage? Well, we're talking about T1 tumors, which are two centimeters in diameter or less, T2 tumors going from two to five centimeters, T3, which are larger than five centimeters, and T4, which is invasion into the chest wall. And the important thing to remember is that because we're dealing with uh, 3D volumes here, T3 tumors, which are five centimeters or larger, are at least 27,000% larger in volume. Now, current preclinical models cannot recreate this difference, right? Spheroids and organoids max out at 500 microns. And we know that small animals like mice, they have really tiny mammary glands, right? Like here's a picture. So there's no way to really recreate the most important predictor. And so from our perspective, the really deep foundational problem is that we couldn't keep human tissues alive outside the body. We've tried and we've failed for 130 years. Keliomics has actually solved that very deep foundational problem. In a very brief overview, what we do is we grow the stem cells to confluence on a thermal responsive plate. This allows us to release those stem cells from a as a sheet. So they're not, they're not single cell suspension, they're not trypsinized, they're not damaged. We as a company procure and process donated tissues, in this case, breast tissue and we're able to secure that tissue between two MSC sheets. The result is a complex 3D environment that encompasses the entirety of all the breast elements in human breast tissue. And to this, we can add whatever cancer model we like. Isolated cells, cell lines, spheroids, or patient-derived organoids, and even patient-derived xenografts. Okay, these tissues are stable in culture for a minimum of eight weeks, and we've done this now for over 400 patients' tissues. Uh, and we can actually get access to subcutaneous fat, breast tissue, momentum, mesentery, and even pericolonic fat, which is called epiploic fat. And in fact, as an ultimate proof of the stability of these tissues and their functionality, we can gather these tissues up after weeks in culture, transplant them into immunocompromised mice, and they will engraft. And that process is extremely complex. It requires a lot of crosstalk between host and the graft, 
So we know these tissues are performing the way they're supposed to. We view these tissues as breakthrough models for diseases of fat, such as obesity, aging, lipedema, diabetes, and hypertension, but they're also the native human environment for solid tumors. So what this means is that we can grow and study breast cancer in human breast tissue in the lab. We can study colon cancer in human colonic fat, melanoma in subcutaneous fat. And because our tissues, you know, preserve the patient specific factors, we can advance the factors that determine drug response to the lab, therefore allowing us to perform clinical trials in a dish. So let's say we want to do a new adjuvant breast cancer trial. And the, the sponsor says we'd like 50 subjects, all of them female, 35 years to 80 years old, and an appropriate racial distribution, 31 white, 10 Hispanic, six black, three Asian, reflecting the racial distribution in America. And this is a hot topic right now for both the FDA and the NIH. If we can get all these patients tissues, uh, and then they can specify the specific tumors they want to generate in those tissues. So they say, okay, we want ER negative, ER positive only, tumor stages T1 and T3, and we'd like to do this with two different sphere lines and two PDO lines. Drugs, we wanted to do a three, three point dose response curve, nine total treatment conditions, right? So in this trial, we're looking at a total number of 3,600 different readouts. It's 50 subjects times eight tumor models times nine treatment conditions. And the primary readout, because this is a new adjuvant trial, will be a percent reduction in tumor volume. It's on par with pathologic complete response, right? And then once all this is established, our team goes to work. The developer sends us their cancer models. We establish them in our labs, and then we procure the tissue that we need using our national network of donors. It takes us about three months to procure tissue for, from 50 subjects, and we build the tumors and begin testing. And our customers gain massive advantages. We outperform both traditional preclinical models and standard clinical trials. So under our system, each subject can generate multiple tumors uh, and be tested with multiple doses. This means hundreds of times more data per subject, right? Versus a traditional clinical trial where each subject only has one tumor and can only receive one dose per subject. There's also a major cost advantage. Traditional clinical trial, it's up to $200,000 $200, per subject these days, whereas we can do it for 20,000 per subject with a hundred times more data. We can generate these videos and then on the back end, do whatever molecular readouts you like. Transcriptomics, proteomics, lipidomics, spatial, single cell epigenomics. This is highly reproducible. Um, and just to highlight the competitive landscape, we don't have any direct competitors, right? Uh, 2D cell lines, organoids and spheroids, rodent models, they really don't capture the full composition of human tissues. In terms of barriers to competition, our core technology is set. We are the only company that can stably keep human tissues alive ex vivo. We have patents granted in US, Europe, and China. Tissue procurement is a major challenge for competitors, and we've perfected our approach after a decade of experience. We are the only company that can freeze, thaw, and culture human adipose tissues. And this gives us a lot of reproducibility. In terms of automation and AI, we own two Citation and Biospa systems. So this is a Biospa, which is a desktop incubator. And this is a robotic arm that transfers standard cell culture plates from the incubator to this incubator microscope. This is an inverted fluorescence microscope with a double spinning disc confocal uh, capability. And what this means is that we generate over 100,000 images for all of, for even our simplest experiments. In terms of traction, thus far, leading scientists around the world have enthusiastically adopted our technology, right? So we've done work for Donald McDonald over at Duke. He developed Elekestrant and many other CERDs. Uh, we're doing work with Phil Scherer at UT Southwestern. Uh, he's, you know, one of America's most distinguished scientists. We're doing efficacy studies for two novel monoclonal antibodies for use in breast cancer. Uh, in terms of our technical roadmap, our ex vivo fat and breast tissue, so without the cancer models, those are market ready and we are pushing hard into the obesity and the metabolic uh, discovery space. So in, the, in our pipeline, uh, we have colon cancer, ovarian cancer, melanoma, and pancreatic cancer. And these are all tumors that that target uh, human adipose tissues. So we're in discussions with Lilly and Pfizer, Novo, the Edema Foundation. Thank you very much, and I'm happy to take questions.